All right, all right. Today's spy was up 0.4% and we did get the gap up and we did hit the intraday brand new all-time high. And tomorrow we do have the PCE data, which is one of the most important inflation data that we're going to get. So we are likely going to see another gap up or down, but it's important to notice the magnitude of these arrows that I drew was not by accident. I told you if we were going higher, it would be a very small amount. And because we gapped up higher, that is one of my favorite trades where you instantly just take the short trade at the open for the good chance we're just going to fill the gap. So it was a very simple day trade and it requires no overnight risk of carrying any swing position. So that is exactly what I intend to do for PCE data. And I still do think all of the risk is still to the downside. So any upside will easily be able to be faded, which means bears will have no trouble fading the rally because I have plenty of reasons to believe there is just no way we are going on a very strong bull rally from here and if we are we will have plenty of time to react to it so there's really no FOMO here day trading is working very well so going into the PCE data we really have very similar arrows if we continue higher towards all-time highs we will start melting up higher towards 581 and if melt up is not a term you're familiar with it simply means we are just going to go up very slowly and in very small increments day after day just continue to grind higher until we get to 581 however if we get the bear scenario that is where you are are going to get that elevator down which means we are going to go down very quickly and by a larger magnitude so you're going to go down faster in price and time and that would easily take us towards 560 to 556 so i do believe you need to look for all of the risk currently to the downside if you are shorting this market you need to be very cautious of doing so at new all-time highs meaning if you're swing trading day trading you don't care if the market's going higher or lower in the longer term because you're simply worried about what's happening within that day so as you can tell, the bulls failed to hold that breakout today, which by definition is a bearish day. All the bears need to do now is after the PCE data. If the PCE data is bad enough and they could continue pushing and we break today's low, we'll break down below the daily five EMA and we can start to get that high volume selling pressure. So I still think all of the risk is to the downside. However, we still do have a bull trend. So the highest probability chance is still the melt up scenario. But if you are day trading, do not be afraid to fade those rallies because there is a good chance sellers are going to continue to show up and we could get that high volume rejection at any point in time so i do believe you should be prepared for that scenario and, and very aware of it as we are heading into a very volatile period on the Nasdaq 100 triple Qs, we were up 0.75% today. And again, we had the same arrows as SPY. The small move higher was likely going to take us to 493 to fill the gap. And that is exactly what we did. We opened right at the gap fill. And then all day long, we gave back all of those gains to fully fill the gap and to retest the breakout. And if you look at this candle, there is nothing bullish about it. The bulls failed to hold the breakout. Even after the gap filled, the bulls couldn't get back to the high of the day. So if we see that continue tomorrow after the PCE data, we could easily come back down towards the bottom of this range at 473 on a rejection of the top of the range at 493. Of course, there will be a support in the middle there right around 483. So everything is happening in $10 ranges here. If we gap up after PCE data and the bulls are strong, we are going to look for another $10 move higher from 493 up to 503. And that will test the previous all time high. So once again, the melt up scenario for the bulls will be very slow and easy to react to. The meltdown scenario for the bears will happen very quickly on high volume selling. So I do believe all of the risk is still to the downside. However, we do have bull trends. So the highest probability chance is that we do get the melt up scenario. But as I always tell you to do, move like water and be prepared for both of these scenarios. That way you are not caught off guard if we just start to melt down and see high volume selling. And then finally, looking at Bitcoin, we are very close to knowing if Bitcoin is going to get the bull breakout. We need to see a close above 65,000 and daily close is above the 200 daily moving average and build up a bull trend and then bitcoin will look like it's ready to go to brand new all-time highs however if you jump the gun here and you think bitcoin is bullish already and we get rejected from here and we see high volume panic selling i do believe there is the possibility that we see a very sharp rejection and from this 200 daily moving average, we could see what's known as a flash crash within crypto, and that could easily take us down towards 47,000. Now, that is not a prediction. I'm simply telling you that it is a very real possibility if we do see a high volume rejection from this resistance. If you want to be very bullish, you can just stay bullish above the breakout at 60,000. Or if you want to wait to get bullish, you want to see that break and close above 65,000.
So jumping back over to S&P 500, tomorrow should be a very exciting day. As we finish out the month of September, we are going to go into a very volatile period as we approach October and the beginning of the pre-election cycle. And that in itself is typically going to be a month you wanna be very cautious in because there could be lots of volatility and de-risking going into the election. And this is not a time where I typically think it is worth to swing trade. I think if you're capable of day trading, cash is king right now and have that liquidity ready to move like water. And then as we get more clarity on where the market wants to go after the election, I think we're going to have a lot more good swing trade ideas and have a lot more confidence that we have good risk reward ratios. Do not be afraid to be patient and sit in cash. Cash is king at times like these during times of volatility and uncertainty. And if you think you have a strong conviction in a trade, that is completely fine. Continue to trade whatever you see. Just manage risk around critical levels. That way, if the trade goes against you, you are managing your risk and you are not going to blow up your account. If you want to come trade with me and get access to all of my technical analysis, my intraday updates, and my trade ideas, that is in my Discord server, which you can find out how to join by clicking on the link in the description of this video. So thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.